Yeah. Loosen up a bit. Okay, so what, what you can do with these is you can slide them in and out and then fix to the log. They might be a slightly different design. Uh, we need more of them and we need some different lengths really and we've only got three rungs in this because we really want six rungs it's a shame because actually these actually do work you know if you go here that is now very stable um, as long as the, the uprights and the mill doesn't catch it it's the other thing but it's they can be attached to the if we had the drop-in nuts which we haven't they could be attached to the rungs or what have you but it does then make it right there very very stable but we'll have to use some wood I think and the rest of it yeah, so it does kink but I think that's our lack of rungs but you can sort of see it's pretty flat and you sort of see we are using the outside here but that works it does work really well but we've only got one only got three supports in total so here look at look at the effort and struggle you have to go through to to get it to get it level when if you just had those brackets you can see how much easier it would be and more accurate and um so yeah but we the, the whole thing as a whole is pretty pretty level Blending mill set up here, and one of the main things that you find tricky with the double ending mill is getting the bar so it sits nice and flat. It'll either want to go up or down, and it depends, and that depends whether it's up or down as to where you've got the saws positioned. You don't want to have the saws positioned too far back that way, it puts a lot of strain on that joint. But if you have it too close into the mill uh, with no gap there, then you don't get the weight helping you to counteract the, the, the bar sag. But another way is, um, you can adjust that um, clamp there, and these two nuts here and on the far side, and then you can pull this post out, in or out, and it will then, that will then cause the bar to either flex up or flex down. And then once you've got that right, you can pinch all those up, pinch all these up again, that one and that one, and then that should hold the bar flat. That's how you sort of can take out, because often you'll get cupping, and the bar will be pulling down in the log. It might be due, due to the chain cutting poorly as well, so that's to bear in mind. But if you do this this way, at least you can start off with a flat cut, and if it does cut one way or the other, you can adjust at the end of it.
So on this one, where we're grabbing into the, we're hopefully set up this guide rail, so the runners of the mill come up against it, so it doesn't keep trying to surge in towards the log and, and jamming all the time. Okay, you can see us, uh, it's still cutting nicely, but the reason we got this rail is because otherwise the, the saw keeps trying to plunge in. So we need to find a, a sort of better way of doing this really, because also we got the height wrong over here. And of course then we skimmed, I wasn't paying attention and I skimmed it. it didn't do us any favors. And in fact, I've done it again, but there. Yeah. It's quite hard to get the height exactly right and you're sort of not paying attention to what that bit of the saw is doing. Uh, but that is our seventh cut on this log. Or eighth cut. And he's still producing good wide boards. And this top section there is almost producing really big uh, wide boards as well. But we need something there. Uh, we're not quite sure what is yet. Maybe we just need much, much bigger skids on the log. Okay, so we've done another good bite. Uh, we're down to the last sort of, got another three planks to do, I think. Plenty of sawdust, as usual. Back again another time for the final pass. <laughs> 